It's fall, y'all. Stick around. I'm going to show you how to create this cool little Lazy Susan. We're starting with an 18 inch round. I bought this at Hobby Lobby and I've prepped it by sanding the edges. It seems like these rounds come, um, their edges are really rough cut. So I smoothed out the edges and I actually took my sander and rolled over the edge a little more, gave it a little more of a curve so I don't have such a hard edge. That way the epoxy is gonna really be able to roll over and give me some pretty edges. Then what I did is I painted this just kind of a light cream color, but I know that the colors that I'm using are uh, quite a bit darker than this. So what I'm gonna do to keep me from having to buy a bunch of different colors of primer is I'm gonna kind of faux paint the edges a little bit with a color that's gonna more match, I guess, uh, or better match, I should say, the colors that we're actually gonna use in the finish. So this is cinnamon. It's by Rust-Oleum. It's a satin. And at this point, it really doesn't matter what your sheen is because uh, we're not putting it into the epoxy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just fog the edges. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm gonna give an illusion that the whole board is this color. Because I know that when we mix our dyes up and our paste, it's gonna be very opaque. So anything that's here on the surface, you're not gonna see. But because the epoxy is very thin when it rolls over the edge, you will be able to see a little bit of this color peeky boo through, and I don't want that. I want this color, this uh, cinnamon, to be able to peeky boo through. So I'm gonna lightly fog my edges. All right, so when I fog, it's very important that you don't do this. All right, because that hard line possibly show up through your finish. So what I want you to do is a very soft fog so that you don't have a hard line, but your edge is covered. Okay, so we'll let the spray paint dry for about an hour or so to where it's not tacky. And then we will go to the next step. Okay, so we're gonna be using Stone Coat Countertop Original Formula. And because it's a melded marble, I want that pattern to stay really tight on my surface. So I'm gonna be using more material than normal. Usually we do three ounces per square foot. We're gonna do five ounces per square foot. And that's gonna let me do some manipulation, which you'll see here in just a little bit. All right, so start with part B first. Because B is thinner, less viscous, it gives us a more accurate measurement when we pour it first. Now, if you don't do this and you pour A first, it's, it's not an issue at all. You'll just have to wait a little bit before you actually measure. So what happens, A is quite a bit thicker than part B. So when I pour A in, it's gonna fall down to the bottom and my measurement is gonna be more accurate more quickly. Now I can, this small amount, I can choose to hand mix it or you can do it with a mixer. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a pro tip. When you're using a mixer and the epoxy doesn't fully cover your paddle, mix very slowly so that you don't incorporate and pull a bunch of air into your epoxy. If you're doing a larger amount, just keep the paddle below the surface of your epoxy and mix it slow enough so that you don't create a vortex. Once you create that vortex, that vortex will suck air down into your epoxy. And that way you won't get as many bubbles. After I use the paddle, I'll come and I'll stir, scraping my edges two or three times. And the reason I do that is because as you mix, product builds up on the sides of your bucket and that part of your product is not mixed up thoroughly. So if you take it and you scrape it and then you hand stir it, it's very important that you hand stir 
that product into the rest of the product or you'll have sticky spots. All right, so the paint is dry. The next step we're gonna do is tape our edges. And the reason we're gonna do that is because this technique, the meld and marble, we're gonna use more product on the surface than normal. Like I said earlier, we're gonna be going five ounces per square foot instead of three ounces per square foot. So that extra material needs to be held onto the surface um, long enough so that it can start to gel up and get really thick. That way when we pull our tape, it'll be nice and thick and it'll roll over the edges very slowly and give us a beautiful edge. So I'll come in with just the masking tape. Now remember, you wanna make sure that your paint that you fogged with is dry so that your paint, your uh, tape doesn't pull your paint off. All right, so when I tape, I like to leave about half of that tape on top and then rub that the rest of it underneath so that it gets a really good seal. Doing a circle, if you'll use smaller pieces of tape, it's easier to get it to bend around that edge and not have as many wrinkles in it. Okay, so we have our colors mixed up and I'm using most of the colors for this project I get from Artist Till Death. Erica is amazing. She's got some unbelievable colors. If you use coupon code RK3 at checkout, you'll get a discount. So don't forget that. All right, so here's the colors that I'm using. Just resin and the color is uh, let's see here, it is light burnt umber and it's really a pretty dark color. So that's gonna be my dark shade. I'm gonna come in with a color called chocolate orange. It's by Color Obsession and it's also available on Erica's website. It has a little more of a red tint to it. And the, re the way I got my color palette is I went to Pinterest and I typed in fall color palette and these colors came up. Um, and then I just matched the shade with the product I was using. This is uh, also a product from Just Resin called Saffron. And this is a beautiful fall type of an orange. I love this color, it's so pretty. And this has a metallic sheen to it. I don't know if you can see it with the camera. These other two are a flat color. Now, this color is called Honey Caramel. It has, it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a little bit uh, dark for what I'm going for. I want it a little lighter. It's kind of a mustardy color right now and I want to go for a, a lighter. So I'm gonna put a few drops of the Alumalite White Opaque Dye because I really want to get this to be a lighter color. That's a almost there, not quite. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Now Erica also has a product, a white that she carries called Titanium White. That product would work as well in, uh, to lighten to lighten it up. All right, I like that. All right, then we are coming in with uh, a product, a mica powder that I sell, Royal Green. I have this on my website. All of these colors, I'll have links for them in the description of the video as well as on my website. You'll actually get more still shots of the process along with links to the actual color products. All right, so here we go. So first of all, we're gonna put down a very light coat of Just Clear. And what this is gonna do this is what we call our skim coat 
or our grease coat. And basically it almost is like grease in a pan because what it's going to do is allow the epoxy to flow easier when we get our colors on the surface because epoxy likes to kind of flow where epoxy has already been. Got a couple of little boogers in there. So by coming on here and laying down a grease coat first, the rest of our epoxy is really gonna flow well. Make sure you push it into those edges. All right. I like to heat mine up just a little bit because it's a little bit cool in here and it just helps um, make it a little more fluid and therefore it's gonna flow a little easier. All right, here we go. First color. I just like to add my dark colors first. Um, just kind of a habit I've gotten into. When I lay this down, everything is random. Don't get in a habit of doing a pattern on this type of a pour. And like I said, this is what we call our melded marble because here in just a minute, you'll see how we kind of softly meld all these colors together. Now I'm just going into the dead space and filling it in. Drop that cup. Um, now I'm gonna come in with my saffron. Again, just kind of going in to my dead space. If you have really big areas of one color, you can run another color through the middle. Help break that up a little bit. I'm gonna save a little bit of that in my cup. All right, we'll come in with the honey caramel. When I think of fall, these are the colors that I think of. And then last, we'll come in with the green. Now I didn't mix up as much green. All the other colors have been about the same ratio, but with the green, since it's a very dark, bold color, I'm gonna come in with a little bit less with it. And I'm gonna save some of that in my cup. All right, tap out any areas that I may have of surface tension. All right, now we're gonna come in with a Bondo spreader. You can do this with a paintbrush if you want. A paintbrush is gonna leave a little more detailed uh, a little different type of a pattern. I really like the Bondo spreader. Um, it gives me uh, a little more control and it doesn't uh, make my colors really muddy. All right, so before I do that, I'm gonna torch it one more time. When I use the Bondo spreader, instead of grasping it really tight with my whole hand, that will really make it easy for me to move too much material. So what I wanna do, I wanna use my thumb and my middle finger very lightly so that I don't put a lot of pressure when I'm doing this. And I'm literally gonna come across and just barely move the epoxy in different directions. Don't go the same way and don't go over one area more than one time. Especially with these dark colors, you could very easily create mud. Just barely touch it. Come in and tap that. All right, 
So it looks like I don't have color around the edge, but that's okay because my clear is underneath there. And here in just a minute, when I start tilting, I'll work this color all around. Okay, so I'm gonna torch it one more time. And it's really cool to just kind of start watching the epoxy start to react. Look how it's starting to get some really cool little cells here. And that's creating that all on its own. All right, so now we're gonna start tilting. Anytime that you add heat to your pattern or you tilt your pattern, it's gonna cause your pattern to get softer and really stretch out. That's another reason I'm using five ounces per square foot of epoxy instead of three ounces. I want to have enough product on my surface that I can create this sort of a finish and have a lot of room to manipulate my colors. Now when you're tilting, don't tilt too fast because what'll happen is you'll create these little finger patterns from your epoxy moving too fast and it's just not as pretty. So what I'm doing now is basically just going and making sure that my edges have plenty of product on it. And as I tilt, I'm kind of making a design all on its own. I really like that. The more you tilt, the more you add heat, the more your pattern gets soft. If you do it too much, you'll actually make your colors very muddy. So you don't wanna do too much of that. Now, if you're doing this on a piece of furniture or even a countertop, and you don't have the ability to tilt your, proje uh, your project, that's okay, because you can come in with your heat gun and you can manipulate it as well. You're not gonna get the exact same pattern, uh, but close to that. So make sure if you're doing a sample board and you know you can't tilt the actual product that you're doing, don't tilt your sa sample board because you won't be able to recreate that. All right, that is really pretty. I love that. Now, I'm going to... We're, what we're going to do with this is we're going to donate this to an auction. So what we're going to do tomorrow after this color coat has dried, we're going to come in with a vinyl uh, sticker that we cut on our Cricut. And it's going to be some cute saying about it being fall. I'm not sure exactly which one we're going to do. But we'll put that on here. And then we'll do a flood coat. Let that dry. Then I'm gonna come back with the ultimate top coat. Probably, I don't know. Guys, let me know, what would you do? Would you do a matte finish or would you do a gloss finish? Um, and then we'll attach the uh, mechanism for the Lazy Susan and we'll donate this to our fundraiser that's coming up on Saturday. All right, so I'm gonna let this set about an hour and a half and we'll pull our tape our excess product, even though um, it's getting really thick, will start to flow over the edge once we pull our tape. But because it is starting to get thick, it's gonna pour very slowly and give us some great edges. Okay, so because of time constraints and we're trying to get this video done, I actually did a similar finish uh, about two hours ago. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the tape on that uh, this actual project and it'll be just the same as the one that we just did which still needs another probably hour and a half to set up all right so you see there's a window to when we need to pull the tape if you pull it too early it's going to be really fluid and 
your design that's on top because it's so fluid is really gonna stretch and roll off the edges. If you wait too long until the epoxy is so set up that when you pull your tape, it's so gelled that it can't flow over the edges. So there's that fine window. And usually around an hour and a half to two hours is a good time frame, but it does adjust with your temperature. If you're in a really hot and humid environment, that hour and a half may be reduced to 45 minutes. If you're in a cooler area, that hour and a half may need to be two and a half hours. So you need to really just pay attention and check. So when you want your epoxy to be at this stage where it's, it's starting to be really thick, but it's still running on its own. Now, a lot of times what I'll do to kind of help it is I'll just take my finger and I'll just pull it down and that's going to help the epoxy to flow a little easier because again, epoxy likes to flow where epoxy has already been. So I'll very lightly hit this with a torch and I'm really careful not to hit my edges too much with heat, but that's just going to help that to flow over a little easier. This area where the epoxy is already flowing, I'm gonna just leave it alone, I won't touch it. I can also come and pick up some epoxy that may be on the table and help that come down. All right, I also like to take my finger, as that epoxy starts to come down, I'll take my finger and I'll rub so that that really does smooth out that edge on the bottom. And when you go to address those drips, it'll be much easier. Sometimes you'll be lacking in some products. Right here, it's a little thin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my stick, my popsicle stick, and I'm gonna scrape it along the bottom of the edge to pick up a little more. And then I'm just gonna bring that over and drizzle that on. And that way, I'm adding product to that edge and it's gonna help it to flow over. I'm not really worried about what it looks like because all of that will eventually drip off. It's just really gonna help clean up that edge. You can even come back with a torch and very lightly hit it. And you can see how that extra product is gonna give it a really pretty edge. Okay, so we'll let this set up till tomorrow. We'll come back, we'll put our vinyl cutout sticker and then we'll do our flood coat and then we'll decide if we're gonna do the gloss or the matte UTC. All right guys, see you tomorrow. Hey, Leslie here. Rhonda just finished this gorgeous Lazy Susan 24 hours ago and it's all dry. We're gonna add this vinyl piece to spruce it up. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to sand it just a little, doesn't have to be just enough to make it grooves. We're gonna wipe it down a little bit with some alcohol. Now, what I like to use is the, um, the dry erase markers and I like to use the fine point ones because they come off very easily with alcohol and I find my middle, which if you see, I've already found it, just so this video would go a little faster. So I found my middle, which is nine, because this is 18 inches around. You can see the mark. I did it both ways to find my middle. I did the same thing here on my vinyl piece, the middle. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to place my marks together. You can see my mark on here and you can see my mark on there on the Lazy Susan. All right. And then I'm going to take some tape. I'm going to tape it down because we're actually only going to do one side at a time. That way it holds its place and we don't have to worry about it coming up and losing its placement. So you should have already prepared your design from your either silhouette or your Cricut. We used a silhouette. 
and I got this off of the internet. You should have already made sure it was good and tacked down on your uh, transfer paper. So what I do is just lift one side, pull it back about halfway. I take my scissors and I cut the bottom piece off. This is where your glass cleaner comes in handy. Spray it really good. And then you take what I call a squeegee. It's a vinyl, vinyl squeegee. You don't have to press down really hard, but you want to press down enough to get the glass cleaner out so that it will stick. Make sure you have some paper towels ready. You're going to wipe it all up and squeegee it a little more. I like to use the Oracle 651 vinyl. It just seems to work better for me than the others. Anyway, get that down pretty good, wipe it up, and you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Take off your tape. Just make sure when you're pulling this off that all of your design comes off. Don't leave any behind. So that's why pull kind of slow. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna spray it really good. And we're gonna squeegee it down too. Now we're just gonna peel back the transfer tape. Now sometimes your design, it's a little wet underneath there still, and it doesn't sometimes want to stay on what you're putting it on. It wants to come back up with the transfer tape. That's why it's really important just to take it slow when you're pulling it back. Pay close attention to what's coming up and not coming up, or should I say what's sticking down. Almost there. So if you have any bubbles left, you're going to take your, your little squeegee, as I call it, and just kind of try to push them bubbles out. You can see the water coming out. All right. Now, you see we still have these little lines left on here from the marker where we've marked the middle. We're going to just take a paper towel and spray a little bit of alcohol on it, and it comes right up. Now, we're ready to be flood coated. And so we'll see you in a little bit. All right, we're gonna do the flood coat. I'm gonna come in with three ounces per square foot using the uh, regular stone coat countertop epoxy. And I'm gonna add a little bit of bling to this. Not a whole lot. I don't want it to take over the piece, but I do want it to capture some of the light. So I'm gonna add a little bit of gold dust. And I mean, when I say little, this is how much. Tiny bit. Put a little bit of that. And then we're gonna come in with a tiny bit of bronze dust. Same thing, tiny bit. I do not want this to be the focal point of the piece. All right, let's go pour. Okay, so the surface has been prepped. We've sanded it to create a tooth so that the epoxy can take a bite of it. And here we go. Three ounces per square foot, like I said earlier. You'll notice I did not dam up my edges because we are only using three ounces. And I'll... And like always, I like to use my hand. And I love how the epoxy just really makes that vinyl pop. And we have just enough of that bling in there to highlight all these pretty colors. Get your edges. So when I'm working on this flood coat, I wanna make sure to hit my edges and really run my finger up underneath so that I push that epoxy 
up underneath the edge. Now there's a couple of things that you can do to help get some really pretty edges. One, you can babysit this and every couple of hours you could run a popsicle stick around the edge and get all of those drips to come off and then you'll have a really smooth edge. We don't do that. I just wait till everything's dried. I flip it over and I sand off the uh, drips and then I'll paint the underside. Also, what you can do if you tend to have ripples, ripples on your edges uh, or maybe surface tension is about six hours after you pour your flood coat. You're going to want to test the surface and if it feels tacky, not stringy, meaning if I touch the epoxy, I don't want that epoxy to come off on my glove. I want it to feel like a really sticky side of tape. At that point, what I'll do is I'll get 91% isopropyl alcohol or 99, squirt that in my hand, and then I'll rub my edges with that alcohol on my hand and it will absolutely make those ridges and waves go away. It'll be like butter. Also, you can do the same thing to the underneath. You can run that stick, get rid of those last drips, then run your hand with the alcohol. And as you run your hand under the edge, it's gonna make all of those drips just flatten out like butter. Okay, I'm going to torch it three times and then we're gonna be done until tomorrow. Okay, we're gonna to torch it three times. Careful not to torch your edges unless you really have to. If you start torching too much and torching your edges, it takes the epoxy back to a very, very fluid state and all of that material is just gonna run off and you're gonna have very thin edges. So I'll wait about three to five minutes in between torching and then I wanna be done. So I'm not really worried about any dust bunnies getting on the surface. Um, I can cover it, uh, maybe build a little tent, put a plastic Tupperware or something over the top um, to help with the dust. But tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll come in here, I'll sand it back down, which is gonna get rid of any of your dust bunnies. And then I'm gonna apply the ultimate top coat. I think I'm gonna go ahead and apply the um, gloss on here because I really want this to be a statement uh, piece. I want it to have that high gloss look. So we are not going to do the UTC on this video. I do have other videos, several other videos, which uh, I will link in the comments that will show you how to do the ultimate top coat. So guys, let me know, what would you do? Would you do the gloss or would you do the matte? Um, I'm a huge fan of the matte. So it's a toss up, which one I'm gonna do. Probably gonna do the gloss. Anyway, so guys, I hope you like this video. I, I hope that you like the fact that we're taking all of these techniques that I'm hopefully teaching you guys and we're showing you that you can do other things besides countertops, furnitures, uh, all kind of fun little uh, Lazy Susans and crafts like that. So if I did a good job bringing you this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we are so fast growing, I'm so excited. Uh, our numbers are going off the chart. So I thank you for that. Also, all of these products are available on either my website, rk3designs.com or go to artisttilldeath.com and she has a huge array of products. So check her website out as well. Remember, use coupon code RK3 for a discount. Also, till the end of October, guys, I want you to be able to have a good fall, and I'm gonna give you a coupon code of 15% off all my products on the website. Use coupon code BOO, one five b o o one five at checkout to save 15 percent through the end of october all right guys until the next video you know what to do don't be scared move forward and be creative